the updates are basically a, a result of the first prospective study that we conduct since 2004. There was one patient with cervical cancer uh, during pregnancy and she really was motivated to continue the pregnancy. At that stage, we, we didn't know too much about the pathology, the entity, and how to treat this case. Looking into the literature, we saw, we noticed that there's a big lack of information at that stage. And so we treated her with chemotherapy during pregnancy and everything went successful. Afterwards, looking into the gaps of scientific knowledge, we decided to start with a prospective study. The, let's say we got several parts of the study with, and I will maybe give a short overview of each part and the innovative aspects of each part. The registration study, um, it's a pan-European registration study, shows that in 503 cases, uh, all type of, types of cancer, all types of treatment, shows that breast cancer is definitely the most common uh, entity and that 42% of cases, cancers diagnosed during pregnancy are breast cancer. Second is hematologic tumors, 18%, and third, cervical cancer with 10%. So that is one of the new um, results. We did present the results of a survey. These are unpublished data, and they show that actually more than 50% of specialists actually would prefer to terminate pregnancy rather than treat with chemotherapy. More than 50% would delay maternal treatment because of the fear of chemotherapy. And a majority also would consider preterm delivery of the baby in order to be able to treat the mother without taking the long-term consequences of preterm baby of preterm delivery into consideration. So I think the results of this survey show that there is still a way to go and that we need to have more research data but also to convince people that cancer treatment during pregnancy is possible. There are new data on the transplacental passage of chemotherapy uh, because the issue on chemotherapy is really a sensitive one and many clinicians, patients, fear for the long-term consequences of, ke of chemotherapy for the children. But our data show that the placenta is a filter function and that not all chemotherapy reaches the fetus. We did this in uh, animals and it showed with which and results can be compared to the human setting. We know that because the placenta is more or less the same. And we see that in many cases, we cannot detect any level of chemotherapy in the fetus. And if it's detectable, these are low levels, especially for drugs that are used for breast cancers. So apirubicin, doxorubicin, taxanes, it's very low levels that we can find with the fetus. So, and the most important or the most vulnerable period of pregnancy is the first trimester because then all the organs are formed. So our point is that if you give chemotherapy after the first trimester, taking into consideration that the placenta is a filter, then we think that it's safe to treat pregnant women with chemotherapy. But we acknowledge that on the long run, we need more data so preliminary data show that the children do well, that there is no increase on congenital malformations, but we definitely need more data on the long term of these children. We, that includes, of course, the heart of the baby, that we, of the children that we also have to examine, because many of these women receive doxorubicin. Doxorubicin is one of the most important drugs in the adjuvant treatment of chemotherapy. It's also one of the standard drugs in hematologic cancers, which was the second most common. So approximately when pregnant women with chemotherapy, 70% receive at doxorubicin. So we think it's also necessary to look to the fetal heart. But preliminary data suggest that this is also safe for the fetal heart. We, so I think this is already very important and that this may add to convince uh, clinicians to treat cancer to pre during pregnancy with, um, with chemotherapy. With regard to radiotherapy, we think radiotherapy of the upper parts of the body is possible as well. Because the abdomen, the pregnant uterus, the baby is protected with a lead skirt and there is always a distance from the pregnant womb to the field of radiation. The only, actually in the third trimester of pregnancy, the womb is becoming larger and the fetus is becoming closer to the upper part of the abdomen and then the distance becomes too close. So there, radiotherapy is not possible. But um, 
in the second and first trimester, especially for the breast, Hodgkin disease, tongue cancer, or brain tumors, thyroid tumors, it's possible to irradiate during pregnancy. We started this study in Leuven. We have a collaboration with uh, Prague and with Nijmegen in the Netherlands. Um, as a council member, I now initiated um, a task force uh, to uh, get better data in more patients and to start new initiatives on a European level. So the survey was actually the first result of this uh, task force and we are now in the process of um, looking for new projects, better collaboration in order to get better information to treat these patients as non-pregnant patients. Because that's what we think. We have to look for the prognosis of the mother, also for the child. And we think that the maternal prognosis will be uh, best preserved if we treat them as much as possible as non-pregnant women. That is the best guarantee that we, um, that we have the same prognosis for the mother. Cervical cancer is very difficult because um, in contrast to breast cancer, it's the organ it's where the fetus is itself is, is uh, involved. So, in fact, you should remove the pregnancy as part of the treatment. So it's really challenging. The treatment of cervical cancer during pregnancy depends definitely on the wish of the patient to continue. It depends on the stage of the treatment and it depends on the stage of the pregnancy. And it's this mixture that actually, or this combination, that actually uh, shows clinicians how best to treat um, cervical cancer during pregnancy. But it, it's possible. And it can be a simple colonization, um, it can be trachelectomy, or you can give knee adjuvant chemotherapy followed by <laughs> a surgical resection. Or you can give knee adjuvant chemotherapy to do a cesarean section followed by Wertheim resection or followed by chemoradiation. So you immediately feel that there are different options. And I think cervical cancer is the cancer during pregnancy where there's most discussion and where there are the most different options.